Welcome to Cleveland, Tennessee. Once home to three malls, the Bradley Square Mall had come out on top, but now it seems to be facing problems of its own. Let's step inside and see what the Bradley Square Mall is all about. Actually, before I get started on the history, let's take a moment to admire this fountain. Bradley Square Mall was the work of Crown American, with its conception starting in 1989. Original anchors signed on were Sears, Hess's, Kmart, and JCPenney. Hess's would open up early on in September 1990, while the rest of the mall would undergo an official opening on February 1991. Kmart would be a little late to the party as it opened up in March 1991. Hess's had its typical change up to profits, and then later on to Belk over the 90s and the 2000s. And Kmart would have an expansion and minor update to the mall. But already, there seemed to be a problem. Throughout its life, Bradley Square Mall was reported to have problems holding on to tenants. This only becomes more apparent as we go through the years. Around 2008, a plan to add on a 12 screened cinema was cancelled, and this led the mall to try and draw forward less traditional tenants into the mall, like a gym, a martial arts studio, and even a church. Around 2012, a deal was closed to sell the mall to Shane Morrison Companies. Before then, the mall was under receivership after the previous owner failed to pay up on a loan for the mall. Shane Morrison Companies announced plans to bring back the proposed 12th screen theater and would open up the new Luxury Theater in 2012 under Carmike Cinemas, which is now AMC Cinemas. 2012 also saw a major renovation to update the mall entrances, minor interior work, and an expansion for Belk. Sears was seared relatively early on, but would quickly become home to Dunham Sports in 2013. Sears briefly attempted to run a hometown store in the mall, which didn't last long. Around early 2016, it was announced that Kmart would close down. Later that year, it was announced that the Kmart would be torn down to make way for a strip mall and additional parking referred to as the Shops at Bradley Square. This would bring a number of national retailers to the mall, but it would set a bad example, as this would ultimately hurt the enclosed mall in the long run. Fast forward to 2020. This year has not been kind to this mall at all. Upon reopening, it was found that Bath & Body Works has quietly closed permanently. In addition, JCPenney is on its way out as part of the wave of closings driven by bankruptcy. Given the strip mall development, I would expect this mall to turn inside out as time progresses as the inline tenants wane.
It is unfortunate to think that this mall may not be around for much longer, as it is a rare example of late 80s Crown American. Sure, it's been tampered with, but it still looks like an overall lovely mall. Even the single fountain was still active. But with the strip mall development at the edge of the mall parking lot, I have a feeling that the fate of this mall has already been decided. Less interior corridors and more strip boxes. It's also interesting to note that Bradley Square Mall was considered a mall killer in its prime. Before then, you had the Cleveland Mall and the Village Mall, both of which were com clearly competing against each other, but still managing to coexist. Then, in comes the Bradley Square, which killed off both. Cleveland Mall is now a medical center with no public access, while the Village Mall has been repurposed into the Village Green with offices and a handful of services still in place. In fact, we might come to the Village Green in the near future. Cleveland doesn't strike me as a city well suited for a mall though. For one, it's named after an impoverished hole in northern Ohio and it's just up the freeway from Chattanooga, which has already got Northgate Mall in Hamilton Place. The former we've already covered, and the latter we will cover soon. If there is any room for a mall here, it would have to be a small mall, maybe two anchors at most. Additionally, it would have to be propped up heavily by local businesses and services. In my humble opinion, Bradley Square Mall is far too big for this city. Anyway, that's enough from me about this mall. What did you think of this mall? Did you like the Bradley Square, or did you hate it? Tell us down in the comments below, after prodding the like button, of course. Also, share this video if you think others should see this mall. Oh, and if you want to see even more malls from me, do subscribe. We've already covered well over a hundred malls, and we got hundreds more to go. So come on. Let's go mall walking before any more happens in 2020. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Bradley Square Mall farewell and good luck. Thank you.